Greetings, unsettled souls. <laughs> Sam I be again, doing political commentary for the media speech. It's time, friends. You know what time. It is the massive Fukushima update. Um, a lot of uh, the months that have passed lately have seen a lot of world news sort of um, becoming more prominent than the Fukushima news. Um, that's not the case this month. We have a lot of actual Japan Fukushima news uh, to get to. So we're going to go ahead and do that here and now. Um, first of all, right here, I'm going to go to screen share on this. Babies born with extra arms and legs. Now, let me do. You, let me ask you something here, real quick. You hear about these things all the time on the news, but do you ever stop and think about what they really mean? Go ahead and look at this while I speak. Um, I'll get to. I'll get to more news later. But just look at this. I'm not going to go ahead and take the audio, but uh, by all means, it's there at the. That's the site right there. Fukushima babies born with extra arms and legs. Let me ask you something. Imagine that was you and your kid. You're going to think, you know, that can't happen to you. Maybe you think uh, that the government's telling you the truth and you're living at floor on Florida. Excuse me, Florida. You're living in California. I'm thinking about warm weather. You're living in California. You're living in Oregon. You're living in Washington. You're living in Hawaii. And you, you're not paying any attention. You're saying, well, I like California because my family's here. Or I like California because it's my home. Well, guess what? Your home has been poisoned. And if you live there, these are the kinds of things that are going to be happening to you. It's not going to magically skip you. It's not going to miraculously harm everybody's DNA, but not yours. It is going to harm yours. Maybe you're out there eating cheese, hand over fist, and mushrooms, and you're not paying any attention. You're drinking sake from Japan. You're buying Japanese cars and getting those Japanese auto parts into the uh, into your car, and you're being you're, you're being exposed to that every day. You think it doesn't have an effect? It does. And when when these women have deformed children, do you think that the the DNA damage is only in the fetus or the unborn child? You think it didn't come from the father? You think it's not somewhere hiding deep in the mother's DNA as well, waiting to spring into some horrible form of cancer? Okay, if you've got some magic bullet that stops radiation from doing these kinds of things, then by all means, let me know, and I'll make sure I push it on the next installment. But until then, I think these things matter, and you're going to want to see the rest of the video on her site, friends. I can promise you that. Uh, this is from uh, straightstimes.com. Um, I don't know if they've been on the site before, so a hearty welcome aboard to them. Nuclear plant can't sell power, but thousands will still work there. Now, you got to look at the way that this is worded to truly understand uh, how nefarious and tempestuous these people truly are. They make it sound like, well, here's these plants that are perfectly safe and they're not being used. Why isn't that a shame? Isn't that a damn dirty shame? All we got to do is turn these plants back on and they're going to be fine. We've tightened a few screws and uh, added a few pipes, and we guarantee that it's safe. Well, the last time I checked, Japan was still an island. The last time I checked, they were created by earthquakes, and someday were likely to be destroyed by earthquakes. Until that time, they're going to be hit with massive, massive earthquakes of all varieties, and they're going to do things like Fukushima. We know this because the very doctors and scientists and physicists who predicted that Fukushima was going to happen are the same people that are predicting it's going to happen again. They're the same people saying that you can't build a nuclear power plant in Iran where you're trying to build one because this isn't about politics. This is about ge geography and uh, geology, I should say. There's going to be a massive earthquake there, and it's going to level the Middle East particularly Iran and Bashar. Well, that is the same kind of activity that we're seeing here in Japan. And they want to start the nuclear power plants up again, which, if that doesn't make any sense to you, simply means that you're intelligent. Japan's utility keep plants open and hoping to restart them. Yeah, of course they do, because they don't care about your health or your well-being. They only care about that bottom dollar. It's from Tokyo. More than six thousand workers cycle through the world's 
biggest nuclear power plant every day, to operate and maintain a facility that has not sold a kilowatt of electricity in more than four years. Let's pause there. That's because they should not be selling any electricity whatsoever four years ago or after because there is a great risk of another Fukushima. So there's your first misdirection. We go on here, the buzz at Tokyo Electric Power, that is TEPCO, that is GE, that is who you never want to invest in. Kasha Wazaki Kawa plant plays out daily across Japan, where utility employ thousands of workers to spend billions of dollars awaiting the green light to restart commercial operations. That needs to be a permanent red light. There never needs to be a time that there is a green light to restart commercial operations, nor any other kind of operations, because these are the facts. The facts are that we do not live in a geologically sound planet, and things like nuclear power just are not an option. The other thing is it's being sold to you as a bill of goods tied into the global warming lie. And as we've covered here and proven time and time again, man is not, cannot, and will not warm the planet. What he will do is create nuclear power plants, which will create far more havoc on the planet than would happen even if global warming was happening and we kept coal plants open. This is why people are voting for Trump in droves, I'm telling you, whether you like it or not. With only three of the country's 42 operable reactors running, and those three should not be, they are betting a national government committed to nuclear power will win over local officials and wary public who do not believe enough has been done to guarantee safety after the worst meltdown since Chernobyl. It's worse than Chernobyl, for one thing, another misdirection. Uh, another thing is that they're, what they're waiting on is the permission to make money at the expense of the health of people there. They want to make money regardless of the fact uh, that the first story that we went over today talked about what that leads to with the birth defects. Um, and we've seen it in Chernobyl. We'll look up Belarus birth defects. As I always say, don't do it whilst eating. Even though operating expenses of non-generating reactors remain high, it says, utilities will prefer to keep them open while there is any chance of a restart. There should not be a chance of a restart. This is from James uh, Tavener. He's a Tokyo-based analyst at ISS market. Utilities have already committed significant expenditure for plants to meet new safety standards and decommissioning costs are considerable. Let's pause there. Let's really look at this is the way you get lied to every day. You come to the correct views because I'll break it down for you. Utilities have already committed significant expenditure to plants to meet new safety standards. Those safety standards will do nothing against an earthquake uh, seven or higher. And of course, they go up in orders of magnitude. So a, uh, a 7 to an 8 is not 10 times more, it's 100 times more. A 7.1 is 10 times worse than a 7. It was a 9 that hit Fukushima. The nine biggest regional utilities, on the other part of that, the decommissioning costs are considerable. Well, there's two parts of that. First of all, that's what happens when you build something stupid that you should never have built in the first place. And it is not the, the, the fault of the people that this is going to cost a fortune. It is a, cost, it is a fault of you for being foolish enough to build it. Misdirection. They try it again. It's, it's like when someone says something stupid and then they reword it to try to make it sound like maybe you'll be won over to the stupid idea because they reworded it. That's what's happening in this article all over the place here. The nine biggest regional utilities spent more than $1.5 trillion. That's... Uh, 20.8 billion U.S. dollars on their nuclear plants during the year to March, according to the Bloomberg calculations. Look at the way they wrote that. They like hacked that all up. Didn't they? You can't even tell what that says. That's great. Uh, Nuclear-related costs accounted for 9% of all operating expenses at the utility in the previous fiscal year. So the best way to save money, of course, is to open it up again and just poison everyone in the area so that their bottom line looks good. It says TEPCO sees itself swinging to a net loss of fossil fuels prices to recover. In other words, since, since uh, the price of oil has gone down, why don't we go ahead and rope people into allowing nuclear again? Even though the ramifications of Fukushima five years ago has not even begun to be seen yet compared to what's going to be seen soon. This is the way they think. These are the things that they want to do to you. And they think that you're going to be too stupid to catch it.
They think that you're not going to tune into shows like this where I'm going to give you the correct views and break it down. They think that you're not going to share the show, that you don't care enough about your health and your families. Well, I'm betting otherwise, and that's why I'm out here. Um, lots, lots more to get to, but if I don't do this, I can't pay bills. This right here, five dollars for one, seven dollars for two. They are autographed. Safe freedom, stop Hillary, NRA. Don't tread on my gun rights, vote freedom first. They're autographed by Christelle and I. You can get it. How? I mean, the correct views on hotmail.com. Go ahead and uh, PayPal me. PayPal me. Five bucks for one, seven bucks for both. Uh, all money you donate to the show goes towards a better show, and you get to hear about uh, really important things like, uh, oh, how about the burning debris problem that we are seeing all over Fukushima? Now, it was the great mind of Christopher Busby who articulately laid this out in a video that he did, and you can look it up online. It's on YouTube. He explains, at least in part, what some of this burning could very likely be justified for. Well, what it is that they're trying to do, I should say. If you have, oh, let's see here. This right here is Japan. This is our little Japan. Now, over here is Fukushima. And if you burn the debris here and keep the poison <clears throat> in the area that it's already in, if you were going to be dumb enough to burn it anyway, which you shouldn't, you would keep it here where my finger is because that's where Fukushima is. It stands to reason that you would just at least continue to poison the area that's already been poisoned, but that's not the case. <clears throat> they burn it here, 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 here. Why would they do that? Why, why would they do that? Well, it sends the toxins back into the air and then Everyone comes down with the same kind of cancers all over Japan. And one area, it cannot sue Fukushima because Fukushima clearly didn't cause cancers on the other end of the country moving against the jet stream, which moves west to east. So by burning it further in the west, they prevent themselves from being exposed for the cancer causing um life destroying people that they really are it keeps them out of court and again keeps the bottom line low there are other reasons too because if you can't see the radiation which you can't if you burn the debris then magically it's all gone never mind the fact that it's poisoning the atmosphere and creating to uh, some of the worst problems we've ever seen that are in fact affecting us in america by the way burning debris from fukushima um again nuclearnews.net Local government officials, rather than objectively, scientifically determine whether it was safe or not for the people, just accepted the central government political decision to have debris from Fukushima brought and burned in many municipalities and prefectures throughout Japan. This would be like having a nuclear meltdown in New York and uh, burning the debris in Kansas. That, that's the kind of logic that we're seeing here for those of you that don't know uh, Japanese geography. As a result, not only the Fukushima people have inhaled radioactive nanoparticles, but also many other people in other locations. Many people flee to safe locations, remember? And now they're getting the same debris burned at their new home. The map below, which I'm screen sharing, for the year 2012 shows locations where Fukushima debris was burned. It was really spread all over Japan during the first three years, 11, 12, and 13. Today, incineration of Fukushima debris continues in 19 locations in the Fukushima prefecture. And again, some of these are not as close to the plant as you would think. These kinds of things go on all the time, and there's nobody out here warning anyone about it at all. That's what I'm doing out here. That's why I'm asking you to hit share and why I'm asking you to subscribe. Friends, on your screen is the Seacrest Motel, seacrestmotel.net. Behind the Seacrest Motel is Cedar Point. And I'll tell you what, I work at a haunted house here in uh, Canton, Ohio, called the Legend of Bear Creek. You're going to want to make sure you check it out. Well, guess what? If you're going to Cedar Point, you're going to be exposed to like seven, I don't know, ten haunted houses. They've got them all over. they got the Walk of Fear over in Frontier Town. And when you go to stay at the Breakers, they're going to want to charge you like $200 for a hotel room. That's why you're going to take a two, three, four, five-minute car ride over to the Seacrest Motel. Look at these rooms. You'll be staying there for a fraction of the cost. And making it even better is the fact that you're going to get a, a lower rate because you listen to the correct views. 
go ahead and tell Vicky at the front desk or her son, hey, I listened to the correct views. Do I get a discount? Guess what? You do. I've never noticed this before. That's actually my van that is at. That's great. I don't mean to digress on air like this, but I hadn't noticed it before. Christelle, if you are nearby, come see this. In the Seacrest Motel is my van parked. Look at this. This is priceless. I don't get that. There you go, friends. The, the truth in advertising. Uh, wait till it kicks over here. It'll be the next picture. Uh, putting my money where my mouth is right there is my van at the Seacrest Motel. That's how often we stay there. So th that's all the proof you need, friends. I, I didn't plan that at all. Neither did the owner. That's all the proof you need, friends. That's how much we trust them there. That's great. Uh, truthactivist.com, Fukushima radiation has contaminated the entire Pacific Ocean, and it's going to get worse. And we've covered this before. Do you know that there is no, as in zero, as in how much talent does Drake have, that kind of zero. There is zero tuna brought out of the Pacific Ocean that is not contaminated with radiation from Fukushima. Oh, they say it's safe. Of course it's safe. It's safe until it gives you cancer. It's safe until it messes up your heart, your DNA, and your kid's born with a leg growing out of his skull. Everything's safe until then, isn't it? It's because you're being lied to. And if you're stupid enough to believe it just because it makes you feel good, then I don't know what to tell you, but I can at least give you the truth. And the truth is this. The nuclear disaster has contaminated the world's largest ocean in only five years, and it's still leaking 300 tons of radioactive waste every day. 300 tons. Doesn't that seem interesting? That's the same number we were giving to you three years ago. They haven't gotten any better. It is still 300 tons all these years later, even with their ice wall and all this crap that they've got. Think about that. Um, think about the fact that beautiful girl Dana, uh, Dana Dunford, uh, the nuclear proctologist. You're not going to forget that name. Look him up. He'll let you know what's going on in the Pacific Ocean. He knows all about the Pacific Ocean. He's taken multiple trips up and down. and can show you die-offs that will make your skin crawl. I'm a horror movie fan. You know what? Horror movies don't scare me like this stuff does. Why? Because this is the stuff where true terror lies, and most people don't have the mental capacity to recognize it when they see it. What was the most dangerous nuclear disaster in history? Most would say Chernobyl in the Ukraine, but they're wrong. In 2011, an earthquake believed to be an aftershock of the 2010 earthquake in Chile created a tsunami that caused a meltdown. We've covered it many times. Um, over the next three months after the disaster, radioactive chemicals, some in even greater qualities than found in Chernobyl, leaked into the Pacific Ocean. However, the numbers may actually be much higher, as Japanese official estimates have been proven by several scientists to be flawed in recent years. And if that weren't bad enough, it goes on here that Fukushima continues to leak up astounding 300 tons of radioactive waste into the Pacific Ocean every day. It will continue to do so indefinitely, as the source of the leak cannot be sealed as it is inaccessible to both humans and robots due to extremely high temperatures. This means that this is a massive amount of, you might think that 300 tons of water isn't a really big deal considering the size and scope of the Pacific Ocean, but you would be wrong because of the way that the food chain works. I mean, we learned this, what, in grade school. Little fish eat big fish, we eat big fish. Well, radiation lives for millions of years. We're talking about things like uh, plutonium, uranium. Look up their half-life, millions of years. Deadly strontium-90 that gets into milk and gets into bones and creates bone cancers and nightmares. You can, having a high calcium level can help, but it's not going to save you. Um, this is what GE has brought to life. It says, even if you can't see the radiation itself, some parts of North America's western coast have been feeling the effects for years. Not long after Fukushima, fish caught in Canada began bleeding from their gills, mouths, and eyeballs. Sounds appetizing, doesn't it? Makes you wonder, what about the fish that are caught before they get sick, but the, the uh, deadly radiation is already in them? That radiation will be just as deadly when it gets down to your plate because they don't decay. Some of the small stuff does, but the, the major stuff never decays. This disease has been ignored by the government and has decimated native fish populations, including the North Pacific herring. 
Elsewhere in Western Canada, independent scientists have measured a 300% increase in the level of radiation. According to them, the amount of radiation in the Pacific Ocean is increasing every year. Uh, to give you some idea how, what that is like, I'll put it in layman's terms. Um, you know how much worse Lady Gaga's music has gotten since the last CD? About 300 times worse. That is roughly the numbers that we're looking at right here. How about that? To put it in, in top 40 terms for you. Further south in Oregon, where you should not live, and not on the coast, USA starfish began losing legs and then disintegrating entirely when Fukushima radiation arrived there in 2013. Now they are dying in record amounts, putting the entire oceanic ecosystem in the area at risk. However, government officials, they lie to you. They say that Fukushima is not to blame, even though radiation in Oregon tuna has tripled after Fukushima. Now keep in mind, we know it came from Fukushima for another reason. We know because there are certain radionuclides that decay at a certain rate. And we can tell if a radionuclide is found in a certain fish or in a sea anemone or something. We can tell this because, first of all, if there wasn't a meltdown, there's no way that these particularly man-made radionuclides could possibly find their way into fish. Second of all, there's no other culprit in the sea. There's no other place that it could possibly be coming from. And we can test this. We can test it and we can prove by the rate of decay exactly how old it is and pinpoint the radiation source within weeks to Fukushima. So don't let them lie to you. In 2014, radiation on California beaches, where if you live in California, you might as well just be suicidal. It has increased by 500%. In response, government officials said that the radiation was coming from a mysterious unknown source, but was nothing to worry about. So in other words, it's easier to believe that there is a mysterious unknown source killing everybody, but not going to kill you, so don't worry, than it is to believe the truth, which I'm telling you here. Scientists are now say the Pacific Ocean is already radioactive and it is currently at least five to ten times more radioactive than when the U.S. government dropped numerous nuclear bombs in the Pacific Ocean after World War II. And if you don't know what kind of mess that created for the world, look up uh, Helen Caldicott nuclear bomb testing and uh, you'll find out quickly. Friends, a massive sinkhole leaks more than 200 million gallons of radioactive water from fertilizer plant into... Florida's main source of drinking water. Now, this is where we get into the world news nuke part of the world nuke news part of the show, if I can talk. And this is where you realize that you can't trust them to accurately report on nuclear power plant meltdowns when you can't even trust them to tell the truth about a fertilizer plant. Massive sinkhole leaks more than 200 million gallons of radioactive water from the fertilizer into Florida's main source of drinking water, but plant owners insist that it's not a risk. Isn't it amazing that the most toxic chemicals in the world, radionuclides, not even chemicals, the most harmful things to the human body and to life on Earth that we know of, is always no risk. Just keep eating, just keep drinking. It reminds me of the uh, episode, uh, or what was it called? Mars is Heaven, where the Martians are waiting to eat the people that are there and keep telling them, just go to sleep. Everything is fine. Well, listen to this. A massive sinkhole in a Florida fertilizer plant has caused more than 200 million gallons of radioactive water to leak into the main source of the state's drinking water. In other words, even if you handle nuclear materials correctly, Mother Nature has a way of screwing it up for you. And that is why you should never, as in never, no matter how many times you reword it, never open up a nuclear power plant for any reason, anywhere, at any time. The sinkhole, which measures 45 feet in diameter and is 300 feet deep, opened up beneath a pile of waste material at Mosaic, the world's largest supplier of phosphate. The storage pond containing 215 million gallons of radioactive water sat atop the waste mineral pile and has drained into the Floridian aquifer system, which supplies drinking water to millions of residents. Now, you know they're going to say it's an unknown cause. We don't know what's causing this. The moment that Floridians start experiencing the birth defects and DNA changes that we talked about at the beginning of the show, they're going to say they have no idea where it came from, but nobody will ever even insinuate that it could possibly be this fertilizer plant. Why never?
Aquifers are vast underground systems of porous rocks that hold water and allow it to move through the holes within the rock. In other words, it's what you drink. It's, it's, it's what your family cooks with. It's what you bathe in. The Floridian Aquifer, one of the highest producing in the world, is the principal source of groundwater for most of the state and extends into southern Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. Mosaic said it is monitoring the groundwater and has not found evidence that any off-site water has been contaminated. No, and I'm sure they tested really hard. It's always safe, isn't it? Groundwater moves very slowly, said David Jellison. So does cancer. Mosaic's senior director for environmental and phosphate projects. There is absolutely... There's absolutely nobody at risk. Well, where have we heard that before? You know, where 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 is this lie been given to us? Oh yeah, Fukushima. The sinkhole was discovered at Mosaic's New Wales facility in late August after an employee noticed water levels had dropped in the pile of waste material known as phosphogypsum. Phosphogypsum, excuse me, according to Good Morning America. Yeah, it was a real good morning. It was discovered that the sinkhole damaged the phosphor geysum stacks created during the processing of phosphate to make fertilizer, and the pond on top drained as a result. The pond on top drained as a result, taking gallons of acidic water laced with sulfate and sodium into the sinkhole, according to Tampa Bay Times. And of course, Mosaic wants you to believe that, you know, the, the clouds parted and God pulled the radiation out of the water. And it's not going to bother anybody at all, right? It went into the ground and just magically decided to disappear for the good of life on Earth. Sure. An unknown amount of the fertilizer byproduct, which contains low levels of radiation, always low level, also fell into the sinkhole with the water. Mosaic said some seepage continues, but it did not inform the public of the sinkhole for three weeks because there was no risk. Yeah, there was no risk, so we hid it from you so that you, we just didn't know about the risk and we would get away with the lie. How does uh, radiation become a byproduct of fertilizer anyway? It makes you wonder when you put fertilizer on your lawn if that's not such a good idea. Because you got to remember, there is no safe level of radiation. Low levels of radiation are not safe levels of radiation. Don't buy the lie about the sun. Don't buy the lie about the x-rays. They don't work that way. Uh, it's like holding a hot coal in your hand and then saying that it's not dangerous because the coal couldn't heat the room. It's madness. The water is safe to drink, and it will remain safe to drink. Jellison lied when he told it to the UWFTS, but nearby residents remained less convinced. Yeah, I bet so. The first word comes to mind when you hear radioactivity of cancer, Melanie Wood told the station. I'm concerned. Are my kids going to get sick? Am I going to get sick? My neighbor's pregnant. What's going to do to her baby? Well, I can tell you what it's going to do to her baby. We talked about it at the beginning of the show, and I guarantee she's not going to be very happy when she hears it. Mosaic said it began diverting the pond water into the alternative holding area to reduce the amount of drainage when the problem was detected. So I wonder if this holding area is so ever secure as well. Uh, this is a nightmare. I mean, if you guys that live in Florida, leave me a comment. Let me know how safe you feel, how reassured you feel by what they say. Uh, and then ask yourself why uh, leading politicians oftentimes want to get rid of the EPA because they're useless. Friends, uh, that brings us to the dumdy, dumdy. Dumdy of the day. Yes, Fukushima does have a dumdy of the day. And it's brought to you by none other than our fine friends at StickerJunkie.com. Very true. Sticker Junkie. Why are you going to go to Sticker Junkie? You're going to go to Sticker Junkie because you want the best rates all the time. You want to go to Sticker Junkie and you want to tell them that you heard about their great prices from the correct views. During the dumb day of the day, go ahead and check out. Type in correct views or the correct views with the stickers, and you're going to find out just how amazing your stickers can really look. Uh, let me go ahead and tone down the dumb day music here. You are an idiot. Who's the idiot this time? Of course, it's always the same idiot. It's sweat. North Korea. North Korea is the only place in the world that can rival ISIS in terms of insanity. ISIS might be more evil, but I'm not sure that they're more insane. I, you'd have to work a lot to sell me on that one. Uh, North Korea opposes EMP threat, Daniel John Sabaisky. This is from American Thinker. The nightmare scenario of an, American, of an American set back centuries in time before electricity, refrigeration, and smartphones has grown unnervingly closer with the presence of two North Korean satellites with orbits over a blissfully unaware American populace 
and an Obama administration indifferent to the apocalyptic threat of an EMP attack. Uh, what is an electromagnetic pulse, Sam? Why is it that you're talking about it like it's the most important thing in the world? Well, because in some ways it is. Um, let's remember we live in a very cold climate here in most of the U.S., and um, a lack of heat would kill millions. So let's, let's use our little piece of paper again. Here's America. An EMP blast goes, expands, and sends nuclear radiation over a huge segment of the population. And in this instance, it's not only the radiation that is so unbelievably deadly, but it is also the fact that it eliminates uh, machinery from working properly. If you watch The Walking Dead, that's largely what the world would be like. Only your cars wouldn't start, even if you did find some that ran. Um, EMP destroys cell phone contacts, and it pretty much takes a country back into the Dark Ages. America would lose its superpower status overnight if this kind of thing was to occur. And this is why uh, North Korea is getting the dumby of the day, because they're going to get themselves wiped right off the map for stuff like this. And uh, don't be surprised if even Russia and China don't come to their aid, depending on what it is they do to provoke the world, especially Russia. On February 7th, North Korea launched a second satellite. That's because China has a hole over them, by the way. The KLMS-4, to join their KMS-3 satellite, launched in December of 2012. In an article linked here, you can see it on screen share, in the Washington Times, on April 24th, R. James Woolsey, former director of the CIA, and Peter Vincent Fry, executive director of the Task Force on International and Homeland Security, as well as director of the Nuclear Strategy Forum, both congressional advisory boards warned of the dangers of an apocalyptic EMP attack that these and similar satellites pose. Listen to this. Both satellites are now in South Polar orbits, evading many U.S. missile defense radars and flying over the United States from the South, where our defenses are limited. And, of course, the Obama administration has done nothing to fix this loophole. Um, both satellites, if nuclear armed, could make an electromagnetic pulse attack that could black out the U.S. electric grid for months or even years, thereby killing millions. Think about it, friends. Hospitals, nursing homes. Uh, technology such as the EMP attack is easy since the weapon detonates at high altitude in space. No shock absorbers, heat shield, or vehicle for atmospheric reentry is necessary. Since the radius of the EMP is enormous, thousands of kilometers, accuracy matters very little. Almost any nuclear weapon will do. Moreover, it says North Korea probably has nuclear weapons specifically designed to make a big explosion. Uh, not to make a big explosion, excuse me, but to emit lots of gamma rays to generate high-frequency EMP. Senior Russian generals warned EMP commissioners in 2004 that their EMP nuclear warhead design leaked accidentally to North Korea. And unemployed Russian scientists found work in North Korea's nuclear weapons program. Uh, there's a lot of reason to believe that this was given to them by Russia. Um, but it's a bigger problem than that, because sooner or later, North Korea is going to raise the hackles of the U.S. enough that we simply go in and obliterate them. And I don't want to see that happen, but that's what's going to happen. Woosley and Pry, along with former Reagan science advisor William R. Graham, chairman of the Congressional EMP Commission, Ambassador Henry Cooper, director of the Strategic Defense Initiative, and chief negotiator at the Defense and Space Talks with the USSR, Fritz Aramov, uh, basically a whole bunch of people warned the National Review and February 12th issue, that naive reliance on their transparent disavowals could end up costing millions of American lives. North Korea launched its second satellite on Saturday, yet the national press continues to ignore this existential threat. The White House has not recognized that a nuclear arm in North Korea has demonstrated an ability to kill most Americans with an electromagnetic pulse attack, and White House spokesmen and media have misled the public with unjustified assurances that North Korea has not miniaturized nuclear weapons. So, I mean, nuclear, nuclear, uh, wep nuclear armed North Korea here is uh, mildly proving a little bit of intelligence, and I'll tell you how. Um, they know that the average American is just stupid enough to 
know what uh, a nuclear explosion is. I should say just smart enough to know what a nuclear explosion is. And maybe barely smart enough to realize that North Korea has one or two of these weapons, whereas uh, America has thousands. What the average American isn't even remotely smart enough to comprehend between listening to Usher and Omarion and other things that ruin the uh, mind is that North Korea doesn't need that. All they need, or any other tin horn dictator for that matter, all they need is a satellite or a way to deploy an explode payload over the country so that the after effects completely send the country into the dark ages. That's your massive Fukushima update, friends. Please donate to me. You can do so at the correct views of hotmail.com. Just donate in PayPal. Any dollar amount that you can give, I would be grateful for, it, and I will put it towards a better show. We need a lot of gear here, friends. I don't even own a camera. I really don't. I'm stuck with the webcam that comes with my computer. And if this show is going to grow, then it's going to grow because you cared enough to make it happen. I'll be out here doing my best. I need you doing yours. That means donating, sharing, and subscribing. Good night, friends. God bless.